Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about a project uh, that I do in my spare time, which is called Bryophytes Around the World. It's a photography based project. And my belief is that a good photograph of a species in its natural habitat is really worth its weight in gold. And I'm going to give an, an illustration here uh, to, to, show, to back up this claim. On the right here are, are two line images of Traumatodon palanciae. And these were the only images available anywhere of this species up until recently. The left hand image is uh, a line drawing from McGill's Flora, pretty good line drawing. And the right hand image is a line drawing from Sims uh, Bryophyte Flora of uh, South Africa, um, a less good uh, line drawing. So images like this leave you thinking um, or, or leave you wondering what do these things really look like in the field? And um, a good photograph can illustrate that. And so recently I did photograph this uh, species. And in fact, it looks like this. I mean, it's a real banger, beautiful species. Look at that. I never get tired of looking at this image. It's absolutely beautiful species. And so that illustrates the, the, the value of, of, of a straightforward, good photograph of the species in its natural habitat. So that leads to the question um, with regards to the bryophytes around the world, uh, what portion of these, uh, what number of these already have good photographs of them? In April 2023, on uh, John Brinder and John Atwood's excellent uh, website, Bryonames, there were 19,465 accepted modern species. So that ex excludes fossil species. I took a random sample of 50 of these and I searched in detail uh, trying to find reasonable photographs of each of these 50. I searched um, the literature, published literature, unpublished literature and um, the Internet. And I found decent photographs of only 10 species. So by extrapolation, this suggests that of all of the species uh, of bryophytes in the world presently, there are reasonable photographs of around about 4,000. And it also suggests that there are no photographs of around 15 and a half thousand species. So 80% of bryophytes around the world do not have a basic good photograph of them in their natural habitat. So the purpose of this uh, project is to try and fill that gap to a small extent. And my aim is to photograph at least 2000 species in the natural habitat, including representatives, importantly, of all families. So there are presently 234 recognized bryophyte families around the world. And I aim to photograph us at least one species from every family. And I aim to provide free use of these photographs by anyone for anything via the Internet. And a third possible aim is to eventually produce a book. So the method is pretty straightforward. I travel to destinations around the world and I photograph bryophytes in the field. I aim to undertake 40 um, trips between 2021 and 2041. So it's a 20 year project. I aim to, to do two trips per year because I do it in my spare time. So time is limited. And I've so far undertaken six trips. Those six trips plus my home country of the UK are highlighted on this map. So they've included Madeira, Iceland, Reunion, South Africa, British Columbia, and most recently, the Southern Appalachians. I've compiled the images from all of those trips apart from the Southern Appalachians, where I've only recently returned from. Once I'm in a location, um, it is also a pretty straightforward process. I 
try to locate species of interest. Then I spend a, an inordinate amount of time stirring at colonies, trying to find the best shoot to photograph. Then once I find the best shoot, it's a pretty straightforward, quick process of actually photographing uh, the shoot that, uh, that I've located. Back at home, uh, oh, sorry, I'll just quickly, uh, this is the hardware, the camera system that I use in the field. Um, it's a micro four thirds system. Uh, it used to be an Olympus EM5 Mark III. That's now been rebranded to the OM Systems OM5 camera. It's basically the same thing, just a different name on it. And importantly, it allows uh, automatic fo focus bracketing. So that allows me to take a series of images through the plane of focus of the bryophyte. Then I stack all of those together um, while I'm, when I'm back from the field to produce a composite image, which includes uh, the complete uh, bryophyte shoot in focus. The only other items of equipment I carry in the field uh, for the photography is a small tripod, mini tripod for photographing species on the ground and a large tripod for photographing species off the ground. Software I use four main pieces of software, Adobe Lightroom for organizing photographs, Helicon Focus for stacking the photographs, Adobe Photoshop for final editing of the stacked image and Adobe Portfolio for publishing the images on a website on the internet. Adobe Portfolio is linked with Lightroom. So I, I, I um, in effect, I publish from Lightroom and that's all handled automatically by Adobe Portfolio. So I have a website, uh, created a website, and that includes images from six uh, regions. This is the website address over here. These are screen captures of the website. It's very simple and straightforward, a basic um, picture library. Um, the main screen includes the regions, then you click on a region and that takes you to a portfolio of images from that region. Then you click on the images from in the portfolio and that brings up a, a large screen image of the uh, photograph and the details of the species, the habitat, the location, etc. So far on the website, there are 320 images from six regions. Uh, free for anyone to use. Southern Appalachians hasn't been added yet, but I hope to do that shortly. So what use is being made of the images? I put um, a request out to Brian at asking this and they've been used in all sorts of ways already, which is, which is very pleasing. Three examples are shown here. Over on the left, um, the images have been used on interpretation uh, panels uh, within Benmore Botanic Garden in Scotland, where they've um, recently um, installed a moss trail. So visitors go around um, a route and there are panels along the route which provide interpretation about the bryophytes present there. And the images have been used on each of those interpretation panels. They've also been used very commonly in publications. Uh, an example here on the front cover of the current issue of The Bryologist. This is Rhizonium glabrescens, photographed in Cypress Falls near Vancouver earlier this year. And most impressively over on the right is Neil Bell's uh, new book, The Hidden World of Mosses. And the photographs have been used extensively through this and including on the, the front cover. This is Phylogonium fulgescens on the front cover photographed on Reunion. There's a link here to the bookshop at the Royal Botanic Gardens from where you can purchase Neil's excellent book. Apart from the images themselves, a few interesting finds have turned up um, during my photography at various locations. This shows the incredible species Rixia atroperperia really embedded in the, the substrate here. 
Um, you can see the antheridial pits along the thallus margin. It's typical hyaline margin to the, um, the, the, the thallus edge. And that species uh, was, was new to Reunion, which we, we subsequently published as new. Another interesting species, this is uh, uh, Conicephalum conicum aggregate. So this was photographed on um, Haida Gwaii earlier this year. It's definitely not Conicum sensu stricto, and it's definitely not Salabrosum, which is the one that's uh, often referred to as occurring in, in North America. This is something different to those, and it's either Conicephalum orientalis, recently described species, presently known only from Japan, so that would be new for North America, or uh, there are slight morphological differences from orientalis, so it may simply be variation within orientalis, or it's a separate species, an undescribed species. And um, pleasingly, Connor Wardrop is uh, going to investigate this matter further as part of his master's studies at UBC. Another interesting find, or the most interesting find so far, Terry Hedison suggested I visit um, a salt pan in um, West Coast National Park to photograph Spherocarpus stipitatus over on the left here. This is a, a Western Cape endemic. While I was there, there was a funereal growing in the same salt pan, it's the only other bryophyte growing there. And we now know that that's a, a new species. And I'm describing that together with Nick Wilding and Terry Hedison. It's the first described funeria, newly described funeria in over 60 years. We're going to call it Funeria Langabanensis. And that manuscript is close to submission. Future trips. Um, these are some of the um, desired locations I wish to go to, highlighted by red dots. There are another 15 locations that I want to get to, which aren't highlighted here, and I'm not yet sure where they will be around the world. Most immediately, I'll be in Chile next month, then in Tasmania in September, next September, and then in the Caribbean in January 2025. That will be in Puerto Rico and some uh, nearby islands in the Caribbean. If you happen to live uh, or you, you work in an, a, a particularly rich area in part of the world that's less explored, the tropics, subtropics, and you may be able to help out with a trip, then I'd be very pleased to hear from you. My email address is here in the bottom right hand corner. Lastly, acknowledgements. Thanks to everyone who has helped me on my trips. I mean, the, the Bryophyte community is just tremendous. And there are so many lovely people who've helped me during the course of my time so far. And uh, they're named here and illustrated here on the right. So I see my time's up. Thank you very much for listening to me and I look forward to hearing from you.